again, Miss Wright, today, and I have a new book, and this book today is called The Story of Ferdinand. Um, this is an oldie but goodie. This is written by Munro Leaf, and drawings are by Robert Lawson. You can tell that I've had this book a very long time, and it has received lots of love. So I have read this book a lot, and this book has a great story and great meaning even when it was written in 1936. So we are gonna learn about Ferdinand the Bull. Once upon a time in Spain, there was a little bull and his name was Ferdinand. All the other little bulls he lived with would run and jump and butt their heads together. But not Ferdinand. He liked to just sit quietly and smell the flowers. He had a favorite spot out in the pasture under a cork tree. It was his favorite tree and he would sit in its shade all day and smell the flowers. I'm, I'm like loving Ferdinand's. I would rather be smelling the flowers and chilling under the tree than button heads with people. That was just me. Sometimes his mother, who was a cow, would worry about him. She was afraid he would be lonesome all by himself. Why don't you run and play with the other little bulls and skip and butt your head, she would say. But Ferdinand would shake his head. I like it better here when I can just sit just quietly and smell the flowers. His mother saw that he was not lonesome and because she was an understanding mother, even though she was a cow, she let him just sit there and be happy. As the years went by, Ferdinand grew and grew until he was very big and strong. So I don't know if you can see, I know it's a little bit backwards, but on this tree, it's marked off his height. Did anybody, ever, anybody do that at their house? Mark, uh, we have, at our house, we have a doorway that we mark the kid's height um, every so often. We have like their little initials and how tall they are. So it has like one week, three months, one year, and two years old. So he's two years old. All the other bulls who had grown up with him in the same pasture would fight each other all day. They would butt each other and stick each other with their horns. What they wanted most of all was to be picked to fight at the bull fights in Madrid. And Madrid is in Spain. So here are all the bulls and they're looking at this poster that says bull fights at the stadium Madrid. But not Ferdinand. He still liked to sit just quietly under the cork tree and smell the flowers. One day, five men came in, came in very funny hats to pick the biggest, fastest, roughest bull to fight in the bullfights in Madrid. All the other bulls ran around snorting and butting leaping and jumping so the men would think that they were very, very strong and fierce and pick them. Ferdinand knew that they wouldn't pick him and he didn't care. So he went out to his favorite cork tree to sit down. He didn't look where he was sitting and instead of sitting on the nice cool grass in the shade, he sat on a bumblebee. Well, if you were a bumblebee and a bull sat on you, what would you do? You would sting him. And that is just what this bull did to Ferdinand. And look at Ferdinand's face. Ooh. I bet that hurt. Have you ever been stung by a bee? I don't recall if I ever. Oh, I've been stung by a yellow jacket and it hurts pretty bad. Wow, did it hurt. Ferdinand jumped up with a snort. He ran around puffing and snorting, 
butting and pawing the ground as if he were crazy. The five men saw him and they all shouted with joy. Here was the largest and fiercest bull of all, just the one for the bullfights in Madrid. So they misunderstood. They thought he was doing that on purpose. Was he doing that on purpose? It's because he got stung by the bee. So they took him away for the bullfight day in a cart. What a day it was. Flags were flying. Bands were playing. And all the lovely ladies had flowers in their hair. They had a parade into the bull ring. First came the Benarios with long, sharp pins with the ribbons on them to stick in the bull and make them mad. Next came the picadores who rode, and I'm sorry if I said that incorrect, who rode skinny horses and they had long spears to stick in the bull and make him madder. Then came the matador, the proudest of all. He thought he was very handsome and bowed to the ladies. He had a red cape and a sword and was supposed to stick the bull last of all. So why would they want to stick the bull? You have these three different groups of men. You have these men back here who had the long, sharp pins so that they could stick the bull to make him mad. Why would, why would the bull do when he got mad? Think about what Ferdinand did when he got stung by that bee. How did he look? What happened to him? Remember he jumped up, he ran around puffing and snorting and butting and pawing the ground. Acting like he was crazy. And then we have that second group of men. They had their long spears to stick. And then we have the matador, who was the last. Who had the sword. Then came the bull. And you know who that was, don't you? Ferdinand. They called him Ferdinand the Fierce. And all the banderillos, banderillos were afraid of him. And the picadores were afraid of him. And the matador was scared stiff. Because remember, they thought he was the strongest, fiercest bull of all. When it turns out, is that really true? Remember, he was just hanging out under the tree, smelling the flowers. While all the other bulls butted heads every day. Ferdinand ran to the middle of the ring and everyone shouted and clapped because they thought he was going to fight fiercely and butt and snort and stick his horns around. But not Ferdinand. When he got to the middle of the ring, he saw the flowers in all the lovely lady's hair and he just sat down quietly and smelled. He wouldn't fight and be fierce, no matter what they did. He just sat and smelled. So there he is in the center of the ring. And the Benarillos were mad, and the Picadores were madder, and the Matador was so mad he cried because he couldn't show off with his cape and sword. And so they had to take Ferdinand home. Here he is in the cart again. And for all I know, he is sitting there still under his favorite cork tree, smelling the flowers just quietly. He is very happy. The end. So I want to know what was it trying to teach us with this Ferdinand? Maybe like stop and smell the roses. Have you ever heard that expression before? That life can be so crazy and sometimes it just takes a moment. You just got to stop and enjoy nature. And that's what Ferdinand did. He didn't worry about butting heads like the other bulls. And he just enjoyed the moment. Just sat still. I think that's a good story this time of what's going on with all this craziness around the world. And people are stressed. And sometimes you just have to let go and just 
be in the moment and just find some time for yourself to be quiet and enjoy things around you. Um, so if, whether that be running or riding your bike or reading a book and snuggled up and reading a good book, which I love to do, and or just being out in nature, enjoying the sunshine or smelling flowers. If you don't have a tree to sit under, just find some flowers. Just enjoy the moment and and be carefree. So I think that's what Ferdinand tried to teach us in this book. Um, and here's here he is on the cover again, smelling the flower. So I hope you enjoyed this book, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.